was good YouTube, we're at 6781 here, and uh, I'm just playing some Arma 2 here, Arma 2 Operation Arrowhead, uh, I'm on the Fallujah map right now, but today I wanted to show you guys a mod I found in the Armaholic site that is called the Auto Gyro mod. Um, I bet you've seen before uh, Auto Gyros, they're basically part airplane and part helicopter. Uh, what they use is a propeller pushing the aircraft, but at the top, instead of a fixed wing like you have in a normal aircraft, they have a spinning rotor blade. The rotor blade is not propelled by the engine, it's just propelled by the force of air pushing upwards through the blades as the uh, aircraft moves forward. And the rotors spin, and these things can uh, go insanely slow, and they're basically unable to stall. So you could come in at a short landing and land in approximately five or ten meters. Basically you can land in an area the size of the uh, the vehicle itself. Uh, so this is a Benson style gyrocopter. It's extremely minimal. Basically it's just a small two-stroke engine bolted on a rotor assembly with a chair and some controls and a gas tank. That's all you really got in terms of all you need to fly. I've actually flown one of these things before they are incredibly stable. It may not look like it, just being an aluminum frame like this, but gyrocopters are some of the most stable aircraft in the air. I've had this, uh, my neighbor has uh, one of these things, it's a uh, Ken Brock Mark II gyrocopter. It's very similar to this one in that it's the same basic design, but it's got a more powerful engine and it's got a larger rotor. So I think this one has a 20 foot rotor uh, assembly that one uh, the one my neighbor has is 23 so it can uh, handle a lot more weight uh, at takeoff and it's got a more powerful 35 horsepower engine so it's pretty decent when you're flying uh, anyway this one's very similar and it handles in Arma very very similar to the real life one so let me get in here get in this pilot and you'll see this is basically the view I have when I'm in my neighbor's gyrocopter. It's insanely minimalized. All you have is your control stick and then down there where his hand would be, that would be the throttle lever. You have your rudder uh, pedals right there. And then above you, about f two feet above your head, you got a spinning rotor blade spinning at 200 to 300 RPM. In the back you got the little 30 horsepower engine with a propeller prop pushing. And that's basically all you need to fly. Uh, so let me start it up here. Uh, in Arma, you can't model the fact that this uh, rotor system just spins via auto rotation, which is the air pushing up through it. So it's actually connected to a rotor shaft off of a different helicopter mod. I think it's the MH6 that uses the base bottle. But the rotor at the top does not do any lifting when it's spinning. So right now, even though it's spinning, it's not doing any lifting. It's only when you move forward that you have lift coming into it. So let me go into third person here, you can see. It's extremely minimal, but it's enough to get up in the air. And it handles really well. The only thing is in Arma, it's kind of underpowered. Uh, so you can't go into steep climbs in it. It'll stall out and it'll kind of fall backward. But, uh, yeah, it's kind of underpowered in Arma. It's the only problem. In real life, the one I've flown before, it's pretty damn powerful for the size it was at. I could throw it around, I could uh, thrash it, I could come in at hard landings and pull out perfectly fine. And it would do the trick, but this one's kind of underpowered since I guess they modeled it after a one-cylinder engine. Dirt bike engine or something, but let's go ahead and take off here. Throttle up. Um, I am flying with a joystick, so it's going to be a lot more smooth than it goes with my mouse. Around 40 knots, it will begin to pull off the runway. 40 knots. Yeah, as you can see, that's all you really need to fly. In the first person, at least. This is about what I see when I'm flying my neighbors. not too dissimilar to this. I mean, you get your rudder control, this swinging action is right here. You 
got your full control, almost the entire rotor assembly button. You can go into dives. The speed tops out at around 200 knots. I usually land in first person, but third person is sometimes easier in this game. I'm not usually used to flying with a, uh, I'm used to using the G-forces as my advantage, and since I can't uh, actually feel G-forces in a video game like this, uh, it's hard to actually land in your, where you want to position yourself. Uh, good thing is, though, that it's simple enough that I can actually fly it a lot like I do uh, with my neighbor's gyrocopter in real life, so that's a bonus, definitely. Go ahead and shut it down. to stop. So I'm chop my head off. Alright. And then, uh, this one over here. This is basically the same exact thing as the, uh, Benzin gyrocopter over there, except it's got a much more powerful engine, and it's fully enclosed with all the flight equipment you need. So, you got all your speed dials, all your airspeed. What the fuck just happened? Anyway, you got your speed dials and all your airspeed and all that fun stuff. Um, and then you got your controller, you got down there would, would be your throttle. So let's throttle this thing up. This one flies actually more similar to the, uh, the other smaller one. 
the other smaller one it looks almost exactly like it. But this one, because it has a little bit more powerful engine, it flies a lot uh, more closely. So this one can reach speeds of about 220 if you're in a straight dive. It's got great ground handling. Obviously sucks. Anyway, restart it. Get out of this one that I was in when I started up. And now that I've shown you this thing, which is awesome, I'm going to actually show you something different. This is a helicopter. It's called the Mozzie Miniature Helicopter. Uh, same mod author, same, it's included in the mod pack. Uh, which I'll link in the description. All these are included in a single mod pack that you just install in your Arma folder. Uh, this one is called the Mozzie. It's a miniature scout helicopter. It was actually d uh, originally designed by the U.S. Uh, Army Air Ops in, uh, I think, the Korean War, but it never saw action because it's too open and uh, unenclosed. So... They turned the designs over to civilians, and civilians turned out this, and uh, now this is one of the most popular uh, home-built helicopters you can actually build on the market. Let me get a good view here. I haven't ever actually flown a helicopter. And I, while I know the basic uh, ways in which to do it, and I know how to do it, I've never actually had experience flying one in real life. So, uh, basically my only experience has been flight simulators and games and stuff, but it's pretty s uh, similar to a gyrocopter, except in a gyrocopter, you have no control over the pitch of the rotors. In a helicopter, it's all about the pitch of the rotors, so if you pull up on the uh, rotor pitch, the helicopter will go up like that. If you uh, lower the rotor pitch, the helicopter will go down. That's what's called the collective. It collectively moves the pitch of the rotor blades. In a helicopter, usually you have the engine set on one throttle speed so that the rotors are constantly spinning at a certain RPM. You really don't need uh, to spin the rotors any faster if you want to go up and down. So in this, the small engine, basically the same engine in the gyrocopters except turned on its side, that small engine is uh, spinning the rotor blades at, I think, about 400 RPM. And those rotor blades then, uh, in turn, they pitch up and down instead of spinning faster or spinning slower. Get into first person here. No water hover on. Slowly increase the throttle. This thing's very fast. You can get a massive tilt out of it and still maintain forward flight. So right now I'm tilting probably around 20 degrees and that's just unheard of in a normal helicopter. In a normal helicopter you're about like here and you're moving forward. 
this one though, you're still going up. You need to tilt about at least 25 degrees to move forward. So, spin it around. The uh, Arma helicopters, unfortunately, they still have that problem of uh, rudder control isn't very strong, so it takes a long time to bank around corners. Whereas in an uh, aircraft, the rudder control is almost too strong. Go up here. I'll try to do a barrel roll. Or fly inverted either way. probably wouldn't have worked in real life, but it probably tore the rotor blades out if you tried that in real life. The only problem with home-built uh, aircraft like this is the G-tolerances they can stand are usually a lot less than what you get in a uh, standard aircraft. Like in standard aircraft, they have backup systems and safety systems to uh, keep it from completely breaking under stress of G-force. In home-built aircraft or uh, ultralight aircraft, like this would be considered a uh, Part 103 ultralight. In ultralight aircraft, you can't have those safety measures unless you petition the FAA for like a recovery shoot or something like that. And the reason why is because uh, in the U.S. at least, ultralight aircraft have to be under 254 pounds, and they have to have uh, a maximum speed uh, no more than. 75 miles per hour, I think it is. So, if you have an ultralight aircraft, it can't go faster than 75 to 80 miles per hour, and it can't have a uh, maximum, uh, or it can't have a maximum weight of uh, 254 pounds. That restricts a lot of what you can do with ultralights, and that's why gyrocopters and uh, and powered sail kites are usually some of the easier choices. It's actually really hard to get all the mechanics you need for a helicopter in the weight requirement for an ultralight aircraft. Ooh, that was close. And the Moxie is one of the only uh, designs that can actually do it, and that's using all aluminum compounds for the body and uh, a tiny two-stroke engine that just eats fuel. And another part about the uh, Part 103 requirements for an ultralight aircraft, and ultralight meaning you don't need like FAA licenses and you don't need a uh, flight plan every time you go out and fly. You can just get in and go fly around. But uh, the other thing about ultralight aircraft is that you have to have a fuel tank that is below five gallons. So if your fuel tank is more than five gallons, you have to register for what's called a uh, experimental aircraft. And experimental aircraft are subject to a lot more scrutiny under the FAA and all that fun stuff. So, but anyway, let's. Uh, I'm ranting about aircraft and FAA guidelines and stuff. Let's get back to actually what you probably came here for, which was the mod itself. Now, these mods are honestly some of the best mods I've seen for aircraft in Arma. And I've seen a lot of mods. I've seen everything from F-16s to AN-225s to you name it. And it's been in Arma. In my Arma, at least. These ones, though, these are extremely practical for if you're setting up a Wasteland server. Because, let's face it, nobody's ever going to get on a Wasteland server and actually fly around in an F-16 and destroy everything. They're going to want to get around the map fast, and they're want to get it, get around it safely and uh, land in a small area so that they can set up a base. These will do that for you extremely easily. Uh, I suggest that if you guys run a Wasteland server, or if you know people who are on Wasteland a lot, they petition the admins to install these things server-side, so that uh, that way they can be accessed via the server database, and they just automatically download in the... Um, in the mission file to your system, and you play on that server, and it'll have these things in there. 
I mean, you could even, uh, I could even imagine in a DayZ server, if you get all the parts you need, like engine parts, you get a rotor assembly, you get fuel canisters, wheels, car wheels, you could actually uh, craft one of these things. That would be pretty cool for a DayZ server. It'd be like Mad Max 2 and just fly around and uh, terrorize the crap out of people in DayZ. But, I mean, these things are awesome, and I seriously suggest you guys uh, go ahead and get the download for it. Alright, I'll see you guys later.